I lived in a seaside town and um, when I was about 13 there were writers that came from abroad like Storm Boy from Australia and System and he'd been you know they brought this culture to us and as a young kind of you know teenager I latched onto it because it gave me something cool to do and I you know I kind of embraced it and then I got kind of suspended from school for piecing on the on the school and stuff like that and um, then I just took a fucking a 13 year bender on heroin and then I went to rehab and you know somehow I just got taken off the track that was my path and got taken off the track and whatnot but now you know I'm kind of back doing what I kind of originally set out to do so yeah yeah I pursue it to the point of making myself ill, mentally ill, at times. So it's almost like a drug anyway. to go to India um, just to get out of my comfort zone really and just check things out and, and check out a different culture and just feed myself in a way as well. I think I felt a little bit dissatisfied or limited by the work that I've been making previously and I had a show coming up which I had the fear about and I, I'd heard a lot about the hand painted signs that were out there. But really what I wanted to do was just make a really big collaboration with, with some of these guys who make the film posters in either Chennai or Mumbai to make it as, as a, a stylistic collaboration where the letter forms from the west meet the letter forms from the east and the, the style of the painting that they make is, is translated into a theme that maybe I would talk to them about or set using some of the characters that we, we all paint on the streets. I think I, I wanted to see it alongside all the other hand-painted stuff that was out there as a part of that, do you know what I mean? It's like, bop, 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 you go down the street and you've got, you know, the signs for the, you know, the guy who sells the chickens and you've got the guy, you know, the big sar the hand-painted woman wearing a sari and then you've got a throw up and then you've got, so it's just like that really, seeing it in, that, in, the, in a different world. No, I didn't really know, I didn't really know what their take on graffiti was. I presumed it wouldn't be that bigger deal out there. Why would you tug up anyway really? It's the same, you know, for the same reason you would do it in London or whatever, you know, just to get over, just to, just to get a reach, just to... It's like Brick Lane, I mean, you know, Brick Lane just but taken to Mumbai or something. It's not frivolous, it's just people, and people do things like that. People like to leave a mark, you know? People like to be creative. Everywhere's a canvas, everything's a canvas. If I see a good, if I see a good thing, it looks good. Sometimes it's just scribble. Like, we was here, a little wet sort of nonsense. And this is like a rarity in London these days. This is like a 2009 rarity. We've got one of the last graffiti shutters on Shoreditch High Street because since the Olympics is coming, they're not. They just like clean it all now. But this is a wicked shutter. You've got Tox, you've got like Server, Sham 59, the S9 there. And it's all raw, it's on there and it's nice. Like not like now they're cleaning all the other gates. This one looks raw and I like it and I'll be upset if somebody got permission to do a mural over it when all these people have risked their freedom to be arrested for doing this graffiti. If somebody came along and got permission to do a mural off the back of that, that would upset me and I think it looks great as it is. It was, all, it was a wild goose chase but it was fucking amazing. I knew I was in the right place anyway. There was, the evidence was all around you, you know what I mean? This is, people do that out of necessity every day. It's not an artistic endeavour, it's because they want to sell their stuff, you know? And when I was using, when I was out on the street, like if I wanted to score, 
I would just walk up to somebody who was homeless and say, take me to where the drugs are. And I'd, I'd just, you know what I mean, I'd end up in a fucking council state in Dublin, surrounded by horses, and, you know, or on some shithole estate in Camden, with some Rastafarian just coming out of the bushes to serve me crap. Do you know what I mean? And I'd, I've always been able to get what I want, do you know what I mean? Like, with, and, you know, in the ropier circumstances, it didn't bother me, like, walking around Bombay or walking around, you know, some ropey slum, like, looking for what, exactly what I wanted. Do you know where um, around here the sign makers are? Hmm? Signs. You know, uh, signboard painters? Painting. Painting, signs. You know? Yes, signboard painting. That's the way life is, and that people generally are quite helpful, you know. And if, you know, if they're curious about what you're doing, then. And along the way, out of all the people that you ask, you're going to find somebody who's really helpful. Do you know what I mean? If you keep on asking, you're going to get what you want. You're going to get to where you need to be anyway, at least. It's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult because it went, I mean, especially in a place like India where culturally it's, it's so diverse, you know, you've got Hindus and Sikhs and Muslims and Christians. I think that Indians in general probably find it difficult to understand why someone would spend what for them is like a great deal of money on paint to do something that is, I don't know, outside, outside of their understanding culturally. Like I did a painting today and the people paid for the painting, it was like, say like 200 pounds. There's no way you could kind of justify that. It's not bad luck, but we people think that money can't come because of this, because of eyes and faces, because of this money can't come. It's, uh, it's a very important uh, pillar of Islam, which is that uh, you do not uh, uh, depict uh, the human form or you do not depict uh, uh, animals because this is tantamount to idolatry. It's just overwhelmed really. This is the thing, this is the thing. While I was there, I thought like, uh, oh, it's cool man, it's all good. I've seen fucking Slumdog Millionaire. It's that generation of the internet and, and you know, lack of concentration span and being overwhelmed by images and stuff. And I just thought, oh, well, I've seen, I've seen all this. You know. It's like the first time I went to prison, I just dealt with it because I was there. I hadn't felt like that for a long time, and it was either, like, I think, a mixture of like shock, sadness, like feeling really happy because I was seeing this new stuff, you know. But it's just a real kind of jumble of emotions. It's just, it was quite powerful. I don't know. It makes me. I suppose it makes me uncomfortable to think about it because really, you've got to either, you've got to kind of. For me, it's like you've got to radicalise yourself and just. You know, really commit yourself to to making a change. Do you know what I mean? Which means being selfless. You know, and the thing about art is that you've got to be really self-obsessed. You know, to, to fucking to want to do it in the first place, and to believe that this stupid idea you've got is going to be worth something. You know. I think that's where you're. Yeah. Otherwise, this actually this house is a politician house. Yeah. It's very interesting, but uh, I won't know what it is. <laughs> don't let it bring you down. You know? Don't let it. Don't let it make you unhappy. If you 
secret shit going on that you aren't too unhappy, don't worry about it. So I'm going to write the words, don't let it bring you down. And this is because I'm mixing the colours and it's easy now, I have to do this last word first. But it's okay, it's cool. And then tomorrow they're going to pull the building down. Well, I'd found, I'd found these guys who I wanted to just talk to about what materials they used and how they went about making their signs and just to kind of check out what they did. And I was talking and asking, where can I find these guys that make these huge paintings? This guy said, look, come with me, come with me. We jumped on the back of a scooter and went to like, through all these alleyways up to his place and um, I thought, oh, this is it, man. Do you know what I mean? This is it. He's the dude, like, you know, I've, I've kind of found the person I need to speak to. You can see from the guy at the bottom here how big his work is. It's just some, yeah, some dude sat on a rock blasting something else in the sea with a laser beam from his palm. Obviously. And it's, it's the mode in which you do it. It's like you're taking graffiti straight away from the streets and putting it in their culture in, in exactly the same way and not really respecting where they're coming from. This, yeah? Burning candy. But you can see it's like the same, you know, same style. Or trying to engage with the way that they represent themselves and modify what it is you're doing so that it fits in with what they're doing. Then then maybe they would be more inclined to at least question what it was you were doing or feel some affinity with it. We're graffiti artists. What do you mean for the letter? You tell me. Ben, can you tell me? Ben, can you tell me? What do you mean? What are the reasons for the writing? For fun. We paint for fun. Candy. Candy. Uh, actually, uh, this spray. You write this spray. You carry on. The difference in artists in different countries, the attitude that people have, the attitudes that people have towards that, you know, what an artist stands for in the community like this dude. You know, somebody with this skill in Europe or in, say, Shoreditch, it's just, you know, an attitude of self-importance that comes with it. It's like, yeah, I've studied at Goldsmiths and I, you know, I really can interpose modernism or, you know, whatever the new movement is, you know, it's just like, yeah, faux naivism. And, um, yeah, I really like Neo Rausch and I'm, I'm, I'm planning to move to Berlin. You know, it's just like, come off it. I know this, you know, bullshit that surrounds us, do you know what I mean? It's like if you step outside of it, it's just, it's crazy, right? You know? All of it's crazy. It doesn't matter which fucking job you're doing, whether you're an artist or a bank or... Where, where has this come from? Like, what does it mean? How, how do I fit it into my world? And you can't fit it into your world.
believe this is the path that ought to be open to everybody and I think it's beaten out of a lot of people but for some reason it's like I've never really believed believed it when people say oh you never make a living out of that or you'll never get any fulfilment out of that I've always believed that you know I always have gotten fulfilment out of it and whether or not I've, I've believed that I can make any money out of it is something that I've always wanted to pursue because it makes me feel better when it's going good it makes me feel more alive than anything else that I've ever done it gives me purpose anyway so